what a day! What a lovely day! I am going to count them! <laughs> so many boxes in the mail today, I don't even know where to begin. One, two, three. Woo, boy. Oh, man, I am excited. All right, so this one is from MechForce. I know what's inside of that one. We'll put that to the side. This is from a fellow collector. And there are two knives in here that I've been wanting to review on the channel. And he was kind enough when I asked him if I could borrow his that he just got. And he's like, yeah, not only that, but I have an alternate version. I'm going to send both of them to you. So that was super awesome. And then this one right here from the, the, the Big Chungus Company. I mostly know what's in here. I did a trade very recently with my buddy Beard of Doom. And he had gotten himself one of the new runs of the Winter Blade Factor. And it really wasn't a knife for him. You can go watch his review. Uh, I suggest that you do. I don't know if it was more of a review or an unboxing. But what was interesting about it was, um, so this is an OG original Factor, right? And they only came one way as far as what I'm about to describe. On the new version 2s, I think he's calling them B2, he's giving every user a different experience. So you're going to be able to set your own detent strength and the, the strength of the magnets in the lock here by changing out the magnets. He has provided additional magnets he has changed the construction within so that you can more easily take the knife apart and get it back together, I'm assuming, more easily. And what he's doing is he's shipping with the lighter strength magnets. So if you want a stronger detent, like what came on the originals, like this one, and it's still not a strong detent, but the, uh, the magnets uh, are, are fairly strong, I suppose. So when you get it, it's, it's on the weaker side. So for those of you that uh, really want a different experience from the original, you can get that. But if you want it to feel like the original, all you do is you take the additional magnets that are inside the packaging and you switch them out in the knife. Well, old Beardy, my buddy, he wasn't really a fan of the knife overall. He's got big, giant bear paws, and it just really wasn't a good fit for him. So I said, hey, you know what? You weren't 100% happy with the knife. I absolutely am in lust with my factor. I have one coming from the next run, the third run, but I would love to get one of uh, one of the uh, the ones that are currently out there. And if you don't want yours, let's work out a trade. And I went through a few knives that I had, and we came to an agreement. But what he did was he sent it back to Brian uh, to have something adjusted that he explained in the video. So I messaged Brian. I said, hey, buddy, uh, do me a favor. Uh, I am actually trading him for that knife, so it's going to be coming to me at the end of the day. If you feel like doing something different to it, modifying it in some fashion and make it, I don't know, a little bit different, then by all means, feel free, have fun, take all the time you want. So I don't know what he did. What I do know is he sent it back to Doomy for him to do, uh, I guess, sort of like a redemption video. And he held that video upload until I got the knife because he says, oh, oh, Brian did something for you. And it's, uh, it's a different knife now. And I don't want to spoil this surprise. So right now, I'm going to be seeing for the first time what exactly Brian did to this knife. Now, it could be something very, very minor. I have no idea. I really, truly do not know what to expect. Hopefully, there's no dirty notes or anything made of latex in there from Mr. Doomy. All right. 
So let's take a look and see. We're going to see this together. We're going to experience it. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. That is a Timascus clip. <laughs> oh, man. That is so cool. Uh, you guys know I am a slut for Timascus and Mokutai. And that is gorgeous. Brian, thank you so, 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 so very much for doing that. How cool is that, man? Ah. Oh. I'm digging the new backside pivot. A little bit different from the standard in the originals. Everything else appears to be the same. Carbon fiber looks the same. I obviously didn't have a choice on the titanium color because it's just what um, Bearded Doom had when he per when he ordered his. Uh, he got the black and gray. Wouldn't have been my first color choice. Obviously, this was my first color choice. Um, and I really love this because it has a really modern color theme to go with the, the modern design of the knife. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That feels good. It does feel... A little, a little bit different. Very close to being the same, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am, I am bold over that. I mean, that's, that's an expensive clip, dude. Thank you so, 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 so much for doing that. I'm going to have to uh, send you virtual hand jobs through email or something. Uh, that was super awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to uh, Bearded Doom for uh, not liking the factor as much as the rest of the world and giving me the opportunity to add a second one to my collection. Which now is kind of pimpy, a little pimped out there. Yeah, I dig that. That looks really, really sharp, really handsome. So there they are, side by side, totally loving it. That is going to go right into the pocket. Now, let's see what else we've got here. Let's take a look. No, I want to go to the Mech Force. What's in here is actually very, 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 very special. If you're an OG... In the knife community, you've been collecting for a long time. Mech Force, if you don't remember, I did a review on the M1. I still have it. I love it. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to put this down real quick and I'm going to grab it. Okay, here it is. That's the uh, Mech Force M1. I also have their uh, flashlight. I really dig the quality of work they're doing, especially for uh, the prices that they're offering them for. Super nice quality stuff. Um, this was the first experience I had with Mech Force knives, and it's been a very, very positive experience. Really good looking knife, superb action. And I've stayed in contact with them uh, since I got this. And I was told that they were going to be doing a very, very special collaboration very, very soon. I'm like, oh, what's the collaboration, man? They're like, with John Graham. Now, for those that don't know, John Graham uh, was battling cancer for a few years, and he recently lost his battle with cancer a few months ago. And, and he was not only a fabulously talented knife maker, but a truly, genuinely good person as an individual. Uh, I've had many conversations with John. I can't say that we were best friends or anything, but uh, we were friendly. We did talk to each other every now and then. And would just I, I learned a lot about the business from him long before I, I became a knife maker myself and uh, the way dealers work and all kinds of other interesting things. And he was just a genuinely sweet man. Uh, I don't think you'll ever find a human on earth that could say a negative word about John as an individual. Uh, as a knife maker, he did some really out there, wild and crazy things. This, what's in here, was one of the last collaborative efforts that he agreed to before his untimely passing. 
So that alone makes this special. It has a special place in my heart. Even if I don't like the knife, it's going to have a special place in my heart because it'll be a way of remembering John and seeing one of the the final things that uh, that he had a hand in working on. So let's go ahead and get to this. This is a production version of his ringed razel. And I will bring out a razel here in just a moment so that you can get an idea of you know, the inspiration if you're not familiar with John's work. Okay, so the box is otherwise empty. I don't want to cut through whatever packaging there may be, so try and play it safe over here. The uh, Winter Blade Factors are extremely sharp knives. Oh, did I just do that in a bonehead way? No, okay, I'm good. All right. Uh, now, as I was told, there will be, obviously, packaging for these knives very, very soon. This is just a pre-production model, and uh, let's, well, let's tear into it. In speaking with Mike Radford about this knife when it was in development, um, these will come in, these custom snap pouches that we've seen. Only a couple of brands really do it. That's a really, really nice custom pouch. And I want to start immediately drawing some comparisons here to a full custom John Graham knife. Those of you that may remember know that I reviewed this about nine or ten years ago. Somehow I cut myself open. I'm not entirely certain. Uh, I apologize for having blood on the camera. Guess I just got too excited. Okay. I had sold this knife a while back, and my good friend who I sold it to let me borrow it once again couple of months ago, and he's actually going to be selling this. So if anybody wants this when they see it, um, you can message me and I'll put you in contact with him directly. But what we're seeing here is something that developed from the razel. Okay, so there's a razel for you. That's to give you an idea of what the blade shape is like. His unique take on a Warncliffe. And one of the most unique things is he actually sharpens that chisel tip. And it's very, very interesting the way that he did that. So I'm going to keep that in the background here and let us focus on this. We're going to experience the first flip together. I'm pretty excited about that. You ready for it? Oh, that feels really snappy. Let's try that again. Oh, now this is called the Rhino. It's not just simply a ringed razel. A ringed razel would have a blade shape much more similar to this. Here you've got this Rhino looking uh, head basically with the horn and everything. I've got to make sure it's not sharpened before I touch it. Okay, um, where it comes up, it looks like a Rhino's head. And you'll notice the blade edge goes all the way up and around. They did a wonderful job reproducing this in a production knife. Really, really nice. It's a clean look. Let's see. Let's see what the lockup is like. I know I'm bleeding all over the place. Look at this crap. I have no idea how I even did that. I'll have to go back and watch the video while I'm editing it and see. Let's take a look here. Nice early lockup, but we see here it's not a precariously early lockup. There's the jimping on the flipper tab, which is going to make it wonderful for flipping. Yes, I'm getting blood all over the knife. Who cares though, right? It's a knife. Jimping very similar to the jimping that John himself would do. Nice bee blasted and stonewashed finish. There is John's unique body clip or butt clip, if you really want to call it that. Um, that does force you to carry this in a different manner. And when I do the actual review on this knife, I will have carried this for a little bit so that I can report back to you on how that's going to carry. Because I'm, I'm skeptical on it facing this way as opposed to having it back here like on the razel, it's on the opposite side. With this, this would go toward the back of your pocket and it really didn't, it didn't really change the carry profile very much at all. This, I think, 
will. Uh, this one is, oh, they, they have it serial numbered. It is serial number 001. Oh, man, Mike, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. This, this is really, really nice. I'm focusing on close-ups right now because I want you guys to experience the details of it before I get into the, is that, that's, wow, that is deep. Nice, deep, hollow grind. Obviously, it's going to be a flat grind up front for the uh, the tip. I love this. I love this a lot. Now, I am not a person that has ever carried a uh, a ring style knife. I, I'm not a karambit user. I'm not a, uh, a you know a, a professional knife fighter. Or I'm not an assassin or anything like that. Um, so, as far as twirling this around and shit, you're not going to see me doing that because I just I don't have the experience to do that, uh, but I will talk to you in the full review about how this actually performs, how it feels. Right now, I am very impressed with the action, with the lockup, with the sound of it in general. There is no pocketing in here, is there? No. This is a full weight titanium frame lock, and I like that. Get your finger out of there. I like that. That feels really, really nice. And if you're wondering why they went with an exposed uh, blade stop, which you really don't often see these days, it's because that's how John would build his knives. Again, you're going back in time quite a bit uh, to a time when he was making these with some regularity. He hasn't, before his passing, um, he was not making very many knives up, and, up until the end there. And, um, wow, they did a really wonderful, wonderful job of replicating his style. I think that they, they honored him very well with the way they did this. Uh, I am very, very happy to have this. And even though it may not be the most practical knife that I'll have in my collection, uh, again, it'll be a sentimental piece to remember John by and, it's still, it's still going to be fun to use. It just may not be a knife that I carry nearly as often as some others. So that right there, my friends, is the, uh, the Mech Force Knives John Graham collaboration Ringed Rhino. Now let's get to the third box and see what's in there. I have so many things laying around. I still have no earthly idea how in the hell I cut myself. Okay, and this one from my buddy Josh. Let's see what's in here. I'm actually pretty excited about this one as well because I have reviewed probably more Microtech knives than most any YouTuber out there. And I have not been able to get my hands on this particular model. He, uh, he spared no expense with the packing material, I see. Okay. So he said one knife is going to be wrapped and one is going to be in its box. All right. For those that know that logo, this is one of the Chinese-made Microtex made by Reich Knife. And this one happens to be the Annex. Very, very cool. Now, this is the all blacked out version. Everything is black. DLC titanium, DLC uh, plain blade, DLC titanium pivot collar and with the carbon fiber inlay. And this one is going to be the serrated. No, I'm sorry, not, not serrated. Uh, so he has this blade profile and he has the Tanto. So taking this out of the box, I want to be careful because this is not my knife. I'm not going to unpackage this because he may be keeping this packaged up for a reason, maybe for resale value down the road. I have uh, gotten the blood off my hands, so there's no blood that's going to be on there. Uh, here are the two stupid widgets that the Annex is known for. If you go back many years on my channel, I think about six or seven years now when the original Marfion Custom Annex came out, and I didn't even know how to pronounce it back then too. It was, it was so tragic trying to watch that video after finding out how to pronounce it. But anyway, I had bought one of the prototypes and it came, the, 
the Stinger, which was, I, I don't remember, they were just calling it a lanyard back then, was the, the cable on there was twice as long. And this thing, if you actually screwed it in, I'm not going to because I don't want to scratch up his DLC. Uh, I don't think I will, but I don't want to. Um, you would screw it in the back and it would stick out. And unlike a regular lanyard, it doesn't really bend. I mean, it's flexible, but it doesn't lay over. And that sharp son of a bitch would stick you every time. So nobody ever used them. Here's one that's uh, very clearly going to be coming in very handy for anal play. But just for beginners, because it's a little tiny little anyway. Um, so you could put that one in there and you have a non-pokey stinger to put on there. So that's kind of neat. Um, again, I can't think of a human being on earth that's ever going to use those, but they're there. And now they're coming with a tool. So you put this, um, on your driver and you have a pivot tool. Thank goodness. Glad they finally did something like that. And now, oh, that's got a much tighter detent on the Tanto version. Now, I believe this is the one that was brand new. I'm not sure. One of these two is brand spanking new. I'm, I'm going to assume it's this one. So this has not been broken in yet. But look at that finish work. Let me feel this. The carbon fiber is nearly imperceptible. It's nearly seamless on the inlay. Love the clip. There is the Beg Ball, the, the, the ball pocket clip created by Todd Beg that uh, Tony has used on his custom annexes for years and now obviously is making its way into the production. Let me lay this down gently. And this one that appears to be broken in, yeah, that's, that's broken in nicely. That feels really, really good. That's a damn good looking knife right there. I've always loved the Annex. Uh, I always loved the fact that they had a really very slick variation of a manual folder. Because they don't really do a lot of manual folders. And some of them tend to be tip down carry, which I will not do. So when Tony decided to start making a few knives with Reich Knife, what he chose were his customs. So the SOCOM Bravo, the Annex, these are not available as Microtech production knives. So you were spending $800 plus for these knives. So now you can get them for $425, $450 as a production option made in China. So anybody goes, hey, it's just not worth that kind of money. I'd rather buy my shelf of American-made Microtech. Go for it, man. But you can't buy this in a Microtech. You can only buy this in a Marfion Custom. I have never seen one done all black DLC before, but a variation like this, you would be spending around eight to $900, maybe even closer to 1000 these days. So you're getting an exceptional value because you could not touch it for the price. And I will break all of that down when I do the full review. This is simply an unboxing love. I, and now I remember that little palm swell in there that I'd forgotten all about. Uh, if you go back and watch my original Annex review while you're waiting for me to do this review, um, I talk about all the features of the custom. This feels like the custom. The same shape to the frame, the way the palm swells out, all that kind of good stuff, except that was just a plain... Uh, titanium frame lock and this is obviously not it's got that really beautiful inlay I love this all black look I could tell you right now if I if I had the the coin just laying around I have unfortunately had to lay out quite a bit of money in uh, medical expenses lately and I've got quite a bit more coming up but if I just had the extra 450 laying around right now I would go ahead and order one of these up right now in the drop point variation, I like that a lot. The Tanto is cool. It's just not, I don't know, there's something about because of the shape of the handle that I feel this shape complements it more. Or perhaps just because I'm more used to seeing it for years and years and years and years only being available with that blade shape. And now there's a production version. We've got this. And uh, I don't know. I just don't like it as much. It's cool. I just don't like it as much. One thing I am noticing is something that 
has been a bit of an issue for Marfion or for Microtech is that the when the DLC finishes are brand new, they are really, really gorgeous. And very quickly, basically the first time you ever wipe it down and clean it, it kind of changes a little bit. And that's a real friggin' bummer, man. It really is. Because you're buying it to be all blacked out. And you can see here the differences just in this lighting. This is picking up weird, like, oil spill colors. The whole blade is almost gray, whereas this one is a pitch midnight black. And that's just because this is, it's very obvious, this has been wiped down more than once. And this one is obviously the very, the brand spanking new one. So, yeah, there is that too. So you have to worry about that when you're buying into these. But, uh, yeah, I'll save all that for the review. And thank you guys for joining me for this very, very fun and uh, slightly bloody unboxing. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. You'll be seeing a brand spanking new video on this one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, definitely a video on both of these and a dedicated video to the Ringed Rhino, which I, I think I'm, I'm really already super excited about getting to that video. And I'll see you guys at that point.